something huge happened here in Long Beach yesterday. And of course, I had to take you guys on a drive across it. Now this project is one of three projects in the last five years that have topped one billion dollars here in LA County. First off, you had the Wilshire Tallest building, uh, building, then you had the SoFi Stadium where the Rams and the Chargers play. I can't wait to go see that place. Now, Long Beach, we have the new Gerald Desmond Bridge. Well, let's take care of some business first and then let me tell you some facts about the bridge and let's go for a drive. My name is Steve Arthur and I am a local realtor here in the Long Beach area and all of the surrounding cities. Now, if this is our first time meeting here on YouTube, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and ring that bell so that you will be notified every single time that I do a video. And I do put out these videos every single week, all about the things that you want to know about, all about Long Beach and all about the surrounding cities. So if you or anybody that you may know is thinking about moving to Long Beach, all you got to do is give me a call shoot me a text, send an email, or just register on my website for your free gift, and I will personally reach out to you. And don't forget to give me a like if you, because you know, I could really use some self-esteem. Get back to today's subject. The whole goal of building this brand new replacement bridge is to replace the Gerald Desmond Bridge that opened up in 1968 and was already obsolete. It was too low for the new huge cargo ships that they have coming in. And certain cargo ships couldn't come in, certain cargo ships can only come in at low tide only. Now, contrary to belief, the city planner does not just wake up one day and say, you know what, we need a new bridge, let's get started on that. This all started a month after 911. So from 19 years from the blueprint to driving across. All the tests that I've done for this bridge have been done worldwide. They did wind tunnel tests in China. They did engineering studios in Germany. And they even did testing for steel in steel mills here in Arizona. So what they did is they started, they went from start one, let's call every company, let's do this, let's do our research. What's the biggest ship that there's ever going to be? And they came up with that answer, it has to be 203 feet from the water line. So that established the first requirement for the bridge. So they would give it a 205 foot clearance, 50 foot, or six stack container, taller than the old bridge. They also wanted to situate the primary supports for the bridge, it's two towers. They're a thousand feet apart, and that's five times greater than the width of the channel down below. And the reason for that is, if the port wants to expand the waterway, they can do that without having to worry about the bridge down the road. So with the requirements and dimensions in place, they decided to build a cable stayed bridge. Now what this did, it gave them three distinct advantages. Now unlike a suspension bridge, uh, what, like the Golden Gate Bridge, a cable stayed bridge does not require the two giant, large, concrete anchors on the ground that support the two main cables slung over the top of the towers. So therefore, the real estate on both sides of the bridge can be used for other things. So the construction of a cable stayed bridge does not require a temporary buildup. So you don't have to shut down the businesses and traffic can still continue without any interruption. And lastly, the third advantage of it is, it's just badass looking. They wanted a postcard looking bridge, they got it. It's beautiful. Now, was there concerns and, and questions about this? Of course there was. Now, the major concern was earthquake, because we are in Southern California. We have earthquake faults to the north, and we have earthquake faults down to the south. So, what did they do? Now, these designers did not want to see their 15,000 ton bridge become a bunch of rubble over one earthquake. So what they did is they designed the bridge to swing and sway and go up and down six feet either way and even put in some break points so it would just break and not cause more damage. That's thinking ahead. Each 515 foot tower is equipped with an internal pendulum which will counter to any unwanted movement in those towers. That's cool. 
but they went one more step further. They inserted 75 seismic sensors throughout the bridge so they can see every movement on that bridge and when it needs to be, they can fine tune it like a piano. And of course, the budget was set at $950 million to be completed in 2017. But because of the oil field and probably a couple other snags that we haven't heard about, it got delayed a few years and it went over budget a little bit. But in 50 years from now, when people look at that bridge, nobody's gonna remember the cost of the bridge and nobody's gonna remember that it took longer to complete than expected because it is beautiful. Let's check it out. Hope you enjoyed this video and found it a little bit information and just remember to take advantage of all the services that I offer all you got to do is give me a call send me a text shoot an email or just register on my website and I will personally be in touch with you all my information is down below until next time you take care